Good evening. It's good to have each of you here tonight for our evening service. And tonight we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So we will, uh, the whole service will go kind of along that lines. And I don't know if you knew the song that Cindy was playing the prelude, When I See the Blood, I Will Pass Over You. And aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ and that we no longer um, stand in condemnation because of his precious blood that was shed on behalf of our sins. Well, tonight, the first hymn we're going to be singing is page number two in the hymn books. If you're using them, glory to his name. And we'll sing all four stanzas. If you're able to stand, please stand with me as we sing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within, there at the cross where he took me in. the blood applied, glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood track are we on three or four four okay on the fourth come to this fountain so switch and sweet cast thy poor soul at the savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied Right across the page, Jesus paid it all. We'll sing all four stanzas as well. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. the crimson stain he washed in white as snow Lord now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all all to him I owe Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Verse 3, for nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow on the fourth. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to I owe. <coughs> Stain, he washed in white as snow. 
Brother Don Bone, could you open us in a word of prayer, please? Amen. Thank you. You may have a seat. In just a moment, we'll sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, page number five. Um, tonight, again, is our Lord's Supper service, and we may have a few folks that um, this will be your first Lord's Supper here at Open Door. And uh, the whole service is dedicated to remembering what Christ has done for us. So the songs, the message, we just don't tack it on at the end of a service. And um, when it comes time for the elements, um, if perchance when you walked in tonight, if you're going to partake with us, um, on the back as you walked in, there was a communion uh, display with the, um, the already prepackaged wafers and juice. And so even as we sing this, this hymn, if you didn't pick one up on the way in and you'd like to partake, uh, you're welcome to. Uh, just pick that up, and then later on in the service, we'll, we'll partake together. And uh, here at Open Door, we practice close communion. So if you're saved and walking in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to partake with us here. When I survey the wondrous cross, and we will sing all four stanzas of this hymn. His blood, see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow. play a special for us, then our message tonight will be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11.
1 Corinthians chapter 11 will be our passage that we'll be looking at for the Lord's Supper tonight. And we'll be looking at verses 23 through 32. If you'd follow along as I read, here the Bible says, the Apostle Paul speaking, For I have received the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. I think it's interesting that in the scriptures, we are not um, encouraged or commanded to remember the birth of Christ, yet we do. And uh, I, I believe rightfully so, the birth of, of our Savior, and we celebrate his birth during the Christmas time. Uh, but we are commanded to remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's two ordinances that the Lord has given to the local church, one being believer's baptism. Uh, we believe that there is spiritual baptism in the body of Christ at the moment of salvation, but we also believe in water baptism. And we believe that the biblical uh, method, the mode for baptism, is by immersion. You see Christ was baptized by immersion. Uh, you see the Ethiopian eunuch, he they went down into much water and he's baptized, and that certainly is the New Testament pattern. And a baptism is, is nothing in the relation of salvation, but it is a beautiful picture of salvation. In other words, baptism is not a work that saves you, but baptism is the first step of obedience for a believer, and it is a, a step that identifies you with the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate or we uh, keep the ordinance of baptism as a local church, but we also uh, keep the ordinance of the Lord's Supper or communion. Twice in this passage, Christ said the words, this do in remembrance of me. And as a local church here at Open Door Baptist, we celebrate the Lord's Supper about every other month. So for about six uh, times a year, this past year, 2020, was a little different with COVID and everything. Um, but about every other month, uh, we take the time to dedicate a whole service to remember what Christ has done for us, and then also to have a time of examination as well. And, and we do this as we remember what Christ has done. Uh, we show his death, burial, and resurrection, but also we do this until he comes back, which he's promised to do. And so what a wonderful blessing that some 2,000 years ago in an upper room, Christ with his disciples, the Last Supper, and so tonight as a body of believers here at Open Door Baptist Church, we have the opportunity to celebrate the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Tonight, three main thoughts of this do in remembrance of me. First of all, the Lord's Supper is a time of commemoration. It's a time to commemorate. The word commemorate means to honor the memory of somebody or something in a ceremony, to serve as a memorial to something. Throughout the scriptures, God knows our forgetfulness. And so he gave his people whether it's the nation of Israel or us as believers today, memorials to remember his faithfulness. Aren't you thankful um, for the rainbow that reminds us of God's promise to never destroy the earth again with a flood? And some areas where the rain keeps coming and coming and coming and they have local floods, uh, they are so encouraged when the sun comes out and that bow is in the sky. For the nation of Israel, there were all sorts of memorials that God gave. I think of the pile of stones there at Gilgal and in the Jordan River to, to commemorate the faithfulness of God. And so tonight, as we take that piece of, of little unleavened bread and we drink that juice, we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
we honor the memory of what Christ has done for us. As we commemorate the Lord Jesus Christ, we first of all remember or commemorate his sufferings. Again, in verses 24 and 25, it talks about his body, which is broken. And this cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The broken body of Jesus Christ and his blood are both very vivid phrases that help us to picture the suffering and the pain that Jesus went through. And, and as, as, we, um, as we have a time of meditation, and as we take that bread, as we take that juice, it's important for us to remember the sufferings that Jesus Christ went through to save us from our sins. And we could, we could go through in different Lord's Suppers, we've talked about different statements of Christ upon the cross. We've talked about uh, the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane where he asked for this cup to pass over. And whatever aspect of the suffering of Christ that you choose to remember, it's, it's important for us to realize what Christ went through and how he suffered whether it was the beating with the cat of nine tails or it was the crucifixion itself, the crown of thorns that was placed upon his head, we remember his sufferings. But we also commemorate not only his sufferings, but also his sacrifices. His sacrifices. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1.14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And thinking about the incarnation of Jesus Christ, uh, the fact that Christ suffered shame for our behalf. Um, we remember this sacrifice in Matthew chapter 27 and verses 39 through 44. It says, and they, passed by, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. And sayest thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it up in three days, save thyself if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will save him. For he said, I am the Son of God. When we commemorate his sacrifice, we think about the shame that he went through. We think about the rejection, John 1, 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. On that very night before the crucifixion, as the disciples were in the garden of Gethsemane, all of them, as he said, as the shepherd is smited, so the flock is scattered. And all of his disciples betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, left him. The poverty of Jesus Christ. You think about the wealth and the riches that we have, the description of heaven, but yet 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we might be rich. His pain that he suffered, that he sacrificed on our behalf. First Peter 2, 21, For even hereunto were ye called, are ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. John chapter 19 and 20 talks about the death of Jesus Christ and the, the suffering of the death. In John 19, and verse 30, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Christ suffered so much, but he came for a purpose, didn't he? Luke 19, 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom. For many. And tonight, as we take that bread and we take that juice, we commemorate his suffering and his sacrifices. But not only is this a time of commemoration to honor his suffering and sacrifice, but also tonight is a time of celebration. It's a time of celebration for us. The word celebrate means to make a special occasion or day by ceremonies or festivities. It also, from the Latin word of celebration, it means to attend a feast. 
And really, the Lord's Supper is a feast of which we celebrate what the Lord has done and what he has done in providing and securing our salvation, how that has impacted each and every one of us. Um, Notice the words back in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, um, in verse number 24, where it says, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Those two words, for you. What do we celebrate? We celebrate the compassion of Jesus Christ. His suffering and his sacrifice was for you. Remember the the passage when Christ saw the multitudes? The disciples were annoyed. (laughs) Imagine, people to minister to. Sometimes even in our serving the Lord, we get annoyed with people, don't we? But really we should be thankful because they're people that we can minister to and that we can show God's love to. It, Christ, it says, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they were as sheep without a shepherd. And we celebrate tonight as a body of believers the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. We think about the compassion, the love of Christ, which caused him to be willing to suffer, which caused him to be willing to give his life a sacrifice and to take our sin debt, and to provide his righteousness to all who would believe. We celebrate his compassion, but we also celebrate his conquest. Just a few chapters after 1 Corinthians 11, where we just read about the Lord's Supper, is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but now is Christ risen from the dead. He's become the first fruits of them that sleep. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58, he did not stay dead. He was in that tomb, but on the third day, he rose again from the dead. John chapter 11 and verses 25 through 26, speaking to Martha about Lazarus' present state of being dead in the tomb, Christ said, I am the resurrection and life. He that liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Because Christ lives today. Those who have gone before us, who have placed their faith and trust in Christ, he will raise their body, their corruptible bodies, incorruptible. Their soul and spirit are in heaven with him right now. And we celebrate the conquest of Christ over death. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And then also at the Lord's Supper, we celebrate the coming of Christ. This do as often as you do in remembrance of me. This do until I come, right? He's coming back again. John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house were many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We celebrate the fact that Christ is coming again. And I tell you what, we as humans, as a human race, really know how to make a mess of things, don't we? As sinners, we know how to complicate things. But praise the Lord, he's coming back again one day, just as he promised. As Titus says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As I think it's the last last verse in the Bible, Revelation, it's Revelation 22 something, I think it's 20 or 21. Behold, I come quickly. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So we celebrate his compassion. We celebrate his conquest. We celebrate his coming. Revelation 1.18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of death and hell. This do in remembrance of me. 
It's a time of celebration, to celebrate his conquest, to celebrate that he's coming again, to celebrate his compassion. It's a time to commemorate his suffering, and it's a time to commemorate his sacrifice. But lastly, and we close with this before we observe the elements, it's a time of contemplation. The word to contemplate means to think about something seriously, to take time. When we think about what Christ did for us, when we think about the fact that he's no longer dead, but that he's risen and he's at the right hand of the throne of the Father, that causes us to worship him. But before we can worship him, we want to worship him in spirit and truth. And so there are some things that we need to contemplate. And in 1 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul gives us some very clear, a very clear warning that we are not to take the Lord's Supper flippantly. We're not to t- take it casually. We're not to take it with unconfessed sin in our hearts. So as we contemplate, as we think seriously about this, first of all, I would encourage you to contemplate your salvation. Now, the Bible talks very clearly about salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you've put your faith and trust in Christ, you're saved. So I'm not trying to cast doubt on anyone's salvation. But the Lord's Supper, it, it's important for us to realize that it is not a table open to anyone. It's a table open to those who are part of the family of God. Those who have been born again. The words us and the words we use in this Bible, Paul was writing to believers. Now, uh, the first letter of Corinth was written to a whole bunch of carnal believers, but praise the Lord, there was godly sorrow. They repented. And in the second letter, we see some change in their lives. And so, first of all, contemplate your salvation. Now, you don't have to know the day, the date, um, the time, what you ate for breakfast that day, what you were wearing, and all those things. But it is important to remember if you acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you put your faith and trust in Christ to save you from your sins. Uh, That's the Bible way of salvation. So contemplate your salvation. Salvation is, or excuse me, the Lord's Supper is for those who are part of God's family. But also we need to contemplate our sanctification. Verse 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood, um, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And so the words unworthily, um, if, if we take with, now, granted, we're all unworthy. <laughs> Of, of partaking of the Lord's Supper. We're all, we're all unworthy of God's love, but what this is in reference to is with known sin in your life that you are unwilling to confess, that you're unwilling to see it as God sees it. That is unworthily. And so when a believer chooses to partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily, he is inviting God's judgment. He is inviting God's chastisement in his life. Uh, That's why, as it says um, in verse 28, we need to examine ourselves. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Then it says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Some are sick, some are dead, and some are chastened because of it. So the Lord's Supper is a time for us to contemplate our salvation, but also our sanctification. Now, again, we don't believe in sinless perfection, but we do believe in keeping short accounts with the Lord. And that's one of the blessings about the Lord's Supper. We can come in, and the Lord, we could have thought, like we talked about this morning, in our heart that we were clean, we were pure, but all of a sudden, the Lord turned the spotlight on, and he revealed something. And what a blessing the Lord's Supper is for us to acknowledge, for us to agree with God, God, that's not right, that's a sin. Whether it's fear, whether it's worry, whether it's jealousy, anger, bitterness, lust, unforgiveness, 
pride, whatever the sin that God reveals to your heart, if it's unconfessed, as it says in verse number 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And the Lord's Supper is a time for us to contemplate, as the hymn says, nothing between my soul and the Savior. There's nothing between. We can leave tonight and we can partake tonight clean. So it, it's, not, it's not a family member's examination of your life. It's not a church member's examination of your life. It's God's examination of each of our lives individually. And we're going to take just a few moments to spend time thanking the Lord, remembering what he's done for us, and allowing his word and his spirit to examine our hearts. And, and as we take this time, I'll close this time in a word of prayer, and then we'll observe the elements together. So I invite you for the next several minutes to spend some time in prayer, thanking, remembering, but also asking the Lord to search, and if he reveals any sin in your life, to confess that, forsake it, receive his forgiveness, and to partake worthily of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that we will remember tonight. Let's spend some time in prayer. Father God, we do thank you again for the blessing that we have as a body of believers to remember all that you've done. And Father, we are so thankful for your suffering and for your sacrifice. We're thankful for your compassion, that you are victorious 
over sin, death, and the grave. And we're so thankful that you're coming again. And so, God, would you bless each one of us as we partake worthily with our known sins confessed. And, Father, we do this as we do this with the hope that you are coming and that you're coming again soon. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. As we uh, prepare to partake the elements, um, just, just by way of instruction, um, the little white circle thing on the top, that's actually the wafer, and it's rather thin. So in just a moment, we'll partake of that, and then we'll partake of the juice later. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for, um, to, for the bread, if, if Brother Gary Reed, if you could ask a blessing on the bread. Um, after he prays, Miss Cindy will play just a little bit of a hymn, then I'll come back and we'll all partake together. So Brother Gary, could you ask a blessing on the bread, which pictures his body that was broken for us, please? And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, in remembrance of Christ. In just a uh, moment, we'll partake of the juice. Uh, Brother Ralph Loper, would you mind asking a blessing on, on the juice, please? And then after he prays, Cindy will play again, and then we'll partake together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful <coughs> for your Son, the Lord Jesus, for his willingness to die for us. He was not even acquainted with sin, and yet he took mine and all of us sin upon his shoulders and suffered the terrible separation of being apart from you, Heavenly Father, because of your wrath upon such sin, our sin. We thank you for the blood of Christ that this juice represents. We thank you that the blood is permanent it is forever there as a wonderful element to cleanse, to take away our sin. We just give you praise for all your goodness to us in Christ's name.
After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me, in remembrance of Christ. We'll dismiss our service this evening with singing just the chorus, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Lord bless you. Have a great night.